in the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. What a poetic beginning to our Holy Bible. Poetic, yes, but a poor grammatical translation of the original Hebrew. Our English translation leads us to believe that there was nothing in existence. That in the beginning, God created something from nothing, when in actual fact, Genesis, Genesis starts not with the creation of all matter, but with God making and transforming and moving and separating what already exists so that all life will be possible. I get the sense that God has been readying the cosmos for some time before Genesis actually starts. Jewish lore tells of God practicing with, of experimenting with, of recycling 974 creations before finally settling upon one, ours. And I just love this image of God spending eons planning out everything before the very first words of our scripture. And then our scripture opens with water and spirit and formless earth and a God who cannot wait to finally get started. And if this is an uncomfortable idea for you, remember that according to Romans 5, verse 6, Jesus prepared and waited until just the right time to work salvation. As we celebrate Jesus' baptism this week, I think about all of the preparation of Jesus growing up, of learning wisdom, of readying himself for his ministry in his adulthood. Stories which were mostly left out of scripture and certainly left out of the gospel according to Mark. But God loves to prepare things in advance. And Genesis 1 is just introducing this concept that will be carried throughout our scriptures. And for God, after all that preparing, it was time to act decisively in Genesis 1. Just as a lover finally stops planning the engagement, right, of getting the ring, of planning the setting, and how the words, what words am I going to say, and where to do it, and how to do it, when you finally reach that point and you embark on that new stage of relationship when you actually get down on your knee and say those words. God had been planning and preparing. And God uses words to create a new relationship and a new reality. God spoke light into existence. Then God immediately made a value judgment the light, still unseparated from pre-existing darkness, was good. God did not make light become good. Rather, God perceived it as intrinsically good. God distinguished light from darkness and then named both, day and night. Evening came first, then morning, and one day passed. But why does any of this matter? I think Genesis chapter 1, 1 to 5, our passage for today, I think it reveals something about God's character and personality. There are a lot of reasons to think that God has been preparing for and looking forward to this exact moment of creation. God is excited to create life in its many varied forms. And when the moment comes, God notices that the first work of creation is good. When God perceived that the light was good, I have to think that God felt delight. The good news is this, in the first verses of the Bible, we are introduced to a God who has already been at work, creating things, planning things, even before the story starts. And God continues to act in such a way that eventually plants and wild animals and finally humans come into being. It was not a foregone conclusion that God would like what God created, but God declared it good and eventually very good. The God we serve prepares good things, and the God we serve delights in creation. 
The, the raw stuff of creation, all of those primordial waters and the formless wild and waste of the earth in verse 2. But over those primordial chaotic waters, the Spirit of God broods. The New Revised Standard Version, which I read from, said a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And this is certainly a possible translation, but wind and spirit are the same word in Hebrew, ruach. And the verb translated swept is used in Deuteronomy 32 to speak of the mother eagle hovering or brooding over her young ones. The fourth century church father, Ephraim the Syrian, picked up on this image of a brooding bird when he wrote a commentary on Genesis 1 verse 2. The Holy Spirit warmed the waters with a kind of vital warmth, even bringing them to a boil through intense heat in order to make them fertile. The action of a hen is similar. It sits on its eggs, making them fertile through the warmth of incubation. The Holy Spirit as a brooding hen incubating her eggs, it is an unusual image. But it is also compatible with the later image found in Genesis chapter 1 verses 20 to 21 of those same waters bringing forth life at God's command, teeming with creatures of every sort. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind and God saw that it was good. The waters teem with life and it is wild and varied and wonderfully made. These primordial waters, these chaotic waters, as we know not only from scripture but also from evolutionary science, are the very birthplace of life. And that life comes forth at the command of a God who creates it all out of sheer joy and delight. The God who calls forth life from those chaotic primordial waters is the same God who calls us to new birth in the waters of baptism. And Ephraim the Syrian saw this connection too. Here then the Holy Spirit foreshadows the sacrament of holy baptism, prefiguring its arrival so that the waters made fertile by the hovering of that same divine spirit might give birth to the children of God. The spirit who broods over the chaotic primordial waters descends on Jesus and the waters of the Jordan and names him beloved. In the waters of our baptism, God names us beloved and then calls us to live out our new birth in this wild and beautiful world that God loves so much. Genesis 1 reveals that God prepares and acts in ways that may never be fully revealed in order to cause things to happen at just the right time. God's Spirit works in and through the chaos, the chaos of those primordial waters, the chaos of COVID-19, the chaos of our everyday lives. And in this period of global uncertainty and anxiety that we continue to live through, wondering and fearing what may come next, that thought that idea of seeing God's thoughtful preparation and actions to ensure the thriving of life from the very beginning, that is profoundly good news. Amen. Our hymn, 325, Eternal Father, Strong to Save. <laughs> 